This evening, over 300 squatters on sea dam reserves will be relocated in six months. Police crackdown leads to arrest and seizure of suspected drugs, ammunition. Reputed wife fatally stops a laborer amid domestic dispute. In the region, Brazil riot, security concerns over stolen documents, and internationally, UK economic crisis, farmers struggling to cope after Brexit. Welcome to another edition of Channel 2's Headline News Updates. I am Bibi Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. Tonight's newscast begins with a report on a domestic violent incident being probed by the Ghana police force, which ended tragically. Police are investigating the alleged murder of 26-year-old laborer Leroy Day at Breda Street Work in Ross Georgetown on Tuesday, January 10th. The murder occurred sometime around 11.20 p.m. by the man's 30-year-old reputed wife, Shanisa Clark. According to police inquiries, the victim and suspect had been living together at Breda Street Working Ross for the past three years and had a history of frequent arguments. On the night of the incident, they returned home after being away for four days and an argument ensued over paying the landlord's rent. A physical altercation broke out, with Day slapping Clark and striking her with a piece of wood, causing injuries to her left side neck, right hand and jaw. In retaliation, Clark allegedly picked up a kitchen knife and stabbed Day in the left side of his chest. Day then left and was found collapsed on Cross Road, Working Ross, Georgetown, between Hadfield and Lipo Street. He was taken to the Georgetown Public Hospital for emergency surgery. Unfortunately, they succumbed to his injuries yesterday. Clark later turned herself into the Brigdam Police Station and was arrested. She was examined and treated by a doctor and is currently in custody pending further investigations. The body of the victim is at the Georgetown Public Hospital mortuary awaiting a post-mortem examination. Police investigations into this case is ongoing. In other news, President Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali was honored with an honorary doctorate of philosophy and management studies from his alma mater Guru Gobindan Singh in the Prashata University in Delhi, India. The degree was given to him during a special ceremony in recognition of his hard work, dedication, and responsible approach to leadership and development. He also announced plans for a memorandum of understanding to be signed between the university and Guyanese students for online classes and scholarship for low-income Guyanese students to study at the university. The government also plans to continue collaborating with India in various fields such as health, engineering, petroleum, nursing, medical, technology, and pharmacy. Meanwhile, in other developments, in a major crackdown on illegal drug activity, Police officers executed search warrants at two residents in Ogle Street Triumph, East Coast de Marara, on Wednesday, January 11th. The operation, led by a gazetted police officer, took place between 1.30 and 3.30 p.m. While searching a shop at the first residence, police discovered five transparent Ziploc bags containing leaves, seeds, and stems suspected to be cannabis in a small box. A further search uncovered 40 US dollars and 170,000 Guyana dollars in a barrel. The alleged drugs and money were seized, and a female individual was arrested and cautioned for the offense. The team then moved to the second residence, where a search in the kitchen on the lower flat revealed a yellow socks containing over 400 suspected 22 rounds of ammunition and one 12 gauge cartridge. A further search in the kitchen uncovered a box containing four suspected 32 rounds of ammunition and one 9mm round of ammunition. The suspected cannabis, ammunition and money, along with the arrested female, were taken to the Better Fabatin police station. The cannabis was weighed in her present and totaled 7 grams. These items were photographed as evidence. Investigations into the case are ongoing. Stick around after the break. Over 300 squatters on sea dam reserves will be relocated in six months, and millions worth of cannabis were destroyed along the Burgos River.
Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Riverton and Camp Street. Kisun's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Good girl forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for bar for doing surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. When you need money and you gotta get it fast. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Sooner or later you will have another power failure. Are you prepared for the next blackout? Some essential equipment such as security cameras, lights, internet, gate motors, and water pumps may stop working. How can you prevent the next blackout? InverterTech has an affordable solution for you. A strong UPS system which uses the latest inverter and solar battery technology to prevent blackout. We smartly calculate your average power demand so you don't spend more than you need to. Call 223-2233 for more information. Welcome back. On Wednesday, the Minister of Housing and Water, Colin Kroll, met with residents squatting along the Sea Defence Reserve from Horstel into Grove on the east bank of Demerara. During the engagement, Minister Kroll discussed plans by the government to relocate residents to upgrade communities. He committed to completing the relocation process for some 317 households along the Sea Defence Dam within six months and stressed that the river and sea defence area is a zero tolerance zone. Of the 317 households, 47 persons have applied for house lots. Minister Kroll informed residents of the necessary documentation to engage with financial institutions at the meeting to be advised upon the type of house they can be pre-qualified for based on their income brackets. He also announced that construction of houses would begin immediately for those who pre-qualify in a portion of Great Diamond. Residents welcomed the initiative to be relocated. Chairman of the River and Sea Defense Board, Brigadier Retired Gary Beaton, emphasized the importance of clearing and maintaining the river defense as it is critical infrastructure for Guyana, which is below sea level. Chief Executive Officer of the Central Housing and Planning Authority, Sharon Graves, underlined that residents can indicate their preferences for either house lots or a home, and that arrangements for the loans through banks will be made as soon as possible. In other news, in a joint operation led by the Ghana Police Force and the Ghana Defense Force Coast Guard, a significant cannabis cultivation site was discovered in Gaitroy, Savannah, Burbis River. The 12-acre plot was found to contain cannabis plants measuring from 6 inches to 4 feet in height, as well as dried cannabis plants, makeshift tents, farming tools, a motorcycle, a water pump, and 8 live 12-gauge cartridges. According to authorities, the cannabis plants discovered on the site weighed over 23,000 kilograms and had a street value of over $3 million. Additionally, the estimated weight of the dried cannabis was 3,500 pounds with values of over $1 million. The items found on the site, including the tents and dried cannabis, were burnt by the authorities, while the live cartridges were lodged at the central police station. The operation is ongoing and authorities are working to identify and apprehend those involved in the illegal cultivation. Don't go away after the break. UK economic crisis. 
Farmers struggling to cope after Brexit and German coal mine standoff escalates as police moves on protesters. Sooner or later you will have another power failure. Are you prepared for the next blackout? Some essential equipment such as security cameras, lights, internet, gate motors, and water pumps may stop working. How can you prevent the next blackout? InverterTech has an affordable solution for you. A strong UPS system which uses the latest inverter and solar battery technology to prevent blackout. We smartly calculate your average power demand so you don't spend more than you need to. Call 223-2233 for more information. When you need money and you gotta get it fast, Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop is the place for that confidential transaction in a quiet and secure location. You'll get the highest value per penny weight for your gold and also enjoy the lowest interest rates and longest payback period too. Yes, for that instant transaction to solve a pressing financial problem. That Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, 4 to 6 Boyle Place, that's between the Ministry of Housing on Brick Dam and White Castle Fish Shop, be your first and only choice. Creative Jewelry and Pawn Shop, safe and sound, solid and secure, always there for you. Telephone 231-7878 and 223-8955. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs and carpets, bedroom, dining and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs and filing cabinets, outdoor benches and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Caliverton and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Good girl forget things. Oh, Who's the problem granny? I want money for bar for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, lot 238 South Road Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Hey, hey. This is your fancy vehicle and car is your house? Yes, this is my vehicle and actually I'm waiting on my land. I'm actually renting this house for $50,000. $50,000? You help me? You crazy? You mad? You help me good? Why you the buy? Look, let me show you the light. Come with me. Come on down to Fabulous Homes today. Pay $50,000 every month for 36 months or until you reach 50% of your house costs. Move in after 75% of the cost has been paid. This is wonderful. Let's go. Sign me up. All right, let me go and dash away your landlord. To explore our home ownership program, check our Facebook page for more information or come down to our office at Avalon Friendship. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. You got to look. Yes. Call us at 227-1380 or 615-8740. Fabulous Homes International Realty. Changing tenants into homeowners. At Fabulous Homes, we bring your dreams to life. Welcome back. Now let's take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Brazil's communications minister has told Al Jazeera that attempts to destabilize President Lula's government could become more extreme. Paul Pimenta says Brazil needs the international community's support to defend its democracy. Al Jazeera's Lucia Newman reports. Inside Brazil's presidential palace, communications minister Paulo Pimenta shows us where mobs calling for the overthrow of the government first entered his office on Sunday. He says supporters of former President Jair Bolsonaro destroyed everything inside the two adjacent rooms and stole documents, computer files, video cameras and sensitive security information on a hard drive. While some stole the flag, others, says Pimenta, knew exactly what to take and where to find it. One person was arrested yesterday and inside their backpack was a laptop from the Institutional Security Bureau. 
The minister concedes that some security forces in charge of defending the capital were complicit in the attack. Nevertheless, he insists it's made President Lula da Silva stronger. This episode has served for Brazilian society to give a great demonstration of appreciation for its democracy and institutions. Large segments of the population that did not support Lula at this moment are behind him the Supreme Court and the legislative branch in support of the judicial measures needed to bring to justice those responsible for these criminal acts. Although he offered no evidence, Pimenta says that as the investigation into Sunday's events advances, former President Jair Bolsonaro's participation in the process will become increasingly clear. Bolsonaro, who left Brazil on the eve of President Lula's inauguration, is in the United States. Bolsonaro. Bolsonaro has to return because he created the image of a leader and now his followers believe that he ran away when they needed him most, like a general in a battle who flees and abandons his troops. He's at a crossroads. Does he return to Brazil and face possible criminal charges for what happened? Or will he hide and go down in history as someone who abandoned his own supporters like a coward running away? I asked him if the government could guarantee that there won't be new similar attacks against the country's institutions. Those people who despise democracy and our federal system have an important organic presence in our country. The more isolated they feel, the more radical they'll become. That's why we're now seeing attacks against power transmission towers. Increasingly, these groups will move from disputing electoral and political power to becoming illegal groups who carry out violent acts that Brazil is not accustomed to. We're now facing another type of opposition which will require a different type of response from the government. A government that is still fragile and will need all the international support it can get. Pimenta says President Lula is moved by the response to the attack by global leaders, including the support of U.S. President Joe Biden. He confirmed Lula plans to visit the White House in the first fortnight of February to show his appreciation. Lucia Newman, Al Jazeera, Brasilia. Internationally, nearly three years after Brexit, opinion polls suggest are showing a growing number of Britons are regretting leaving the European Union. The change of mind is being driven by the economic turndown that has resulted from exiting the EU, Al Jazeera's Harry Fawcett reports. It's market day in Melton Mowbray, but despite the auctioneer's best efforts, the bidding is proving sluggish. For the farmers, disappointment and dark talk of a recent free trade deal signed with New Zealand. The lamb has been coming over from New Zealand by the ton, um, you know, tons and tons of it. And unfortunately, the last two weeks, the the trade in the local markets has just been been hit by a rock. We're probably probably 15, 20 pound per lamb down. It's the kind of trade deal Britain's government sold as a potential benefit of Brexit, freeing the country from the shackles of the European Union. Most of the farmers here tell us they still support the UK's withdrawal, that business on the whole has held up well. Some, off camera, say they regret their vote, missing EU subsidies and easier access to the European single market. A few steps away, Stephen Nightingale is less shy. Promised Brexit freedoms, he says, just haven't come to pass. I voted to leave and uh, I, I must say I've, uh, I've, sort of, I've sort of wavered a bit really, you know. I think if I knew what I know now, I'd have probably voted to, to stay in really. This area has long been famous for its pork pies. These days it's also known as one of the most staunchly pro-Brexit places in the UK. But there are growing signs here and nationally that sentiment is shifting. One survey this month suggests nearly two-thirds of Britons support a second referendum in the coming years on rejoining the EU. Another, that one in three supporters of the Conservative government voted in on its slogan, Get Brexit Done, believe Brexit has caused more problems than it's solved. Local brewer Conby Crine was always sceptical about Brexit. 10% of his exports used to go to Ireland, but now costs for his retail customers there have doubled and exports to the continent have also dried up. Right now, you know, where we might ship, uh, you know, 10,000 or 20,000 beers at a time into Europe, the paperwork, the fixed costs uh, are really making our beers uncompetitive. 
But even if Brexit regret is starting to trend higher, neither the government nor the main opposition Labour Party is going anywhere near the political risk of a second referendum, when Brexit as an issue has dropped down the list of voters' concerns. More people think Brexit has been bad for the economy, more people are saying Brexit was a bad idea, but the salience of Brexit, has dropped markedly since those sort of days of 2019 when it was all anyone could think or talk or argue about. So even if more people are rethinking their referendum vote, Britain is set to keep its status as Europe's outlier well into the future. Harry Fawcett, Al Jazeera, Leicestershire in the United Kingdom. And finally, German police are back in the village of Lusereth, where they are continuing to evict climate activists for a second day. The protesters do not want the village to be demolished to make way for a coal mine. Al Jazeera Stephenson reports. As dawn broke, police burst into the village, taking protesters by surprise. Activists occupying the entrance to Lusereth were pushed back. Shame on you, they shouted at police. Those who didn't follow orders were carried out, with the police often using force to remove them. So what we're seeing here is that from almost every state in Germany, police is being sent here for this eviction. And that really shows the priorities of the state and the government. People here who are trying to defend our livelihoods, who are trying to, to, to stop climate destruction, that's where the priorities are, to evict those people. And that's really absurd and crazy. One by one they're being dragged out, making the village of Lutzerath emptier and emptier as we speak. But this protest that has been lasting for years is not over yet. Thousands of police officers were used to clear the village, which had been occupied by activists for the past two years. During the eviction, Dina Hamid hid in one of the houses. She sees Lutzerath as a symbol of Germany's failing climate policies. What we really want is to get as many people here as possible because we know if we are many, we can still stop um, the coal from being burned. So that's why we're playing for time. That's where we'll be, we will be as far as up, up as we can go. And then they will need some time to take us down. But their time in the village is running out. While protesters showed some acrobatic skills, police have brought in specialist personnel to remove them from roofs and three houses. The showdown at the mine has become particularly uncomfortable for the Green Party, whose minister has been responsible for keeping coal-fired plants open. He says the war in Ukraine has delayed climate goals. I too believe that climate protection and protests need symbols, but the empty settlement of Lutzerath, where no one lives anymore, is in my view the wrong symbol. From 2030, no more coal will be used to produce electricity in the Rhineland's coal mines. My political work is aimed at achieving similar deals elsewhere in Germany. The activists have said that even after the eviction, their protest over the mine expansion will continue. Step fast on Al Jazeera in Lutzerath. And that is it for today's regional and international news. Here now to three different forecasts.
And that is all for this edition of Channel 2's Headline News Updates. Tune in on Friday at 5.30pm for another episode. Be sure to subscribe, like and follow us on Facebook and YouTube. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.